It's a cold June night at the Shepparton Greyhound track in country Victoria. Green light on. The first race of the yeah. night is about to begin. Racing prison cells came out fairly well. Slow out there was in box slipper. four, Back wearing blue, is two-year-old so racer great. Master Moo. It's his first race in Australia. It will also be his last. He isn't fast enough for our competition. We've discovered within weeks he'll be sold to Asia. They're ready now. They're off and racing. And Mount Stadium came up. Shuffle beat Shuffle back to last. Up to the inside. The inside. Countless greyhounds are being exported to the Asian gambling hotspot, Macau. For those dogs, it's actually a death sentence, a straight-out death sentence. Exporting greyhounds to Macau was banned in March 2013, when Greyhounds Australasia, the overseeing racing body, stopped issuing passports for dogs, citing serious animal welfare concerns. Under national racing rules, trainers and owners exporting greyhounds must apply for and get a greyhound passport. If they don't, they face disqualification from the sport. Despite the regulations, the trade of Australian greyhounds to Macau has continued unabated. And we've tracked down several trainers who are doing it. Stephen, my name's Caro. I'm here to talk to you about your exporting of, of greyhounds over to Macau. I know that you're doing it without passports. You're not doing it with the approval of Greyhounds Listen, Australasia. Darling, you need to come wrong. out. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Do your homework. Are you go registered with homework. Greyhound Before Racing New South Wales? Me, go do your homework. Turn them cameras off. In a six-month investigation by 7.30, We've identified several of the biggest exporters of Australian greyhounds to Asia, including a pair of brothers, Stephen and Mark Ferrugia, of the Glengarry Trial Track, an hour outside of Sydney. Inside their track, this advertisement seeking Aussie dogs for export, freight crates ready to be filled. Two weeks ago, our cameras captured the Ferrugias, sending two trailers loaded with dogs to Sydney's International Airport, bound for Macau. This is Macau's infamous Canadrome racetrack. Getting cameras to film the inner workings here is next to impossible, but undercover investigators working with Animals Australia have managed to do it. Ah, always come from uh, Australia. A new dog uh, will uh, turn uh, on nearly on every Saturday. Tonight's form guide lists dozens of Australian dogs. 18 of those have retained their original names. Unbelievably, all of them are still listed on Australia's official Greyhound database, Fast Track, as either still racing or retired on home soil. Was this hard to ascertain? Not at all. We literally went to the website and you look at the racing form, they race five nights a week. There are still numbers of dogs that have retained their Australian names and then we're able to track them via their own websites back to the owners here in Australia. Inside the Canadrome's vet surgery, a constant stream of greyhounds being treated for injuries. The track surface is far too hard. The next day in Macau, undercover investigators managed to meet with the track's chief vet, Dr Wu. The man, we're told, controls the flow of dogs into the canadrome. We have uh, supplier from Australia and we are buying the dogs from them on monthly. From up high, the Canadrome is a bleak concrete jungle, rows and rows of kennels, up to 800 dogs locked up for most of the day, dozens incinerated every month, 
Animal welfare investigators estimate one dog dies on the track daily. Now, it's a very sad life for a greyhound because the greyhound has no alternative. They are running for their lives. Albano Martins is the head of Anima, the Society for the Protection of Animals in Macau. He says the treatment of Australia's greyhounds here sits at the extreme end of cruelty and he's campaigning for the canadrome to be shut down. What I want the people of Australia to know is that young animals go to Macau and are killed with no choice to be adopted. And I also want the Australian people to, to tell the government that is a shame I am a Western guy and I feel ashamed with such a situation. In Macau, the lives of Australian greyhounds may be cheap, but a new lucrative market is emerging. Secret tracks and illegal betting rings in China. So I, I actually in Beijing or I mean are you in China or just in uh, in Vietnam now? We've tracked down a broker, a middleman, who claims to be the biggest dog exporter to China. His name is Leo. I think he knows like 90% of the Greyhound people in Australia knows me. An undercover investigator spoke with the China-based broker over Skype. It was a bad internet connection, but one thing became clear very quickly. Leo is hungry for business. I can guarantee you just like, you know, if you come to China, try to come to Beijing, I show you how good we treat the dog. Yeah, we, you know, we treat the dog very well. Leo, the broker, is interested in acquiring breeders, our pedigree greyhounds, to sell into China. Thank you. The dogs are from Australia. Australia's greyhounds are also ending up here, racing at a zoo in Shanghai. Their living conditions just as poor, bound for an unavoidable fate. If Australian greyhounds just continue to be exported freely, what can we expect? There will be more suffering and deaths. You know, it's just so unacceptable. This, the, the sins of this industry have just piled up. This is Ba Ria, Vietnam's greyhound racetrack. Undercover investigators recently visited the facility, secretly recording this vision. Bar Ria was set up with the support and involvement of the former chief vet of regulator Greyhound Racing New South Wales, Dr John Newell, back in 2000. It's proved to be a disastrous experiment. Next to Baria Racetrack, a football field has become a killing field. Young and otherwise healthy greyhounds, bred from exported Australian dogs, are enduring a brutal, painful death. It's an appalling sight, a grossly unacceptable standard of euthanizing dogs. We showed the vision to Professor Paul McGreevy, a leading expert in the study of working dogs. These greyhounds are having a, a, a very unpleasant experience and it, it's likely to be associated with considerable pain. I'd go as far as to say it would be horrendous for them. According to the video, the dogs are being injected with poison with a drug called Ecotraz, an insecticide meant for external use only. Locals are recorded on camera forcefully standing on the chest and necks of the dogs as they struggle to breathe. Cries of pain are heard. Well, it looked as though he was crushing it, attempting to either restrain it with his boot or compromise its airway. Is it disturbing for you watching vision like this? Mm. You know a lot about these animals. You've studied them. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a great shame that we treat animals this way, that anybody can 
and profit from animals and then just discard them this way. Yeah. According to data obtained under Freedom of Information from the Department of Agriculture, from January to August 2015 alone, 168 greyhounds have been exported to Asia and the Middle East, all without passports. We've identified dozens of trainers and owners located across Australia who are implicated. You put that camera on me and I'll smash your f***ing head in, I'm telling you. Back in New South Wales, last week, at the Faroujas trial track in Glengarry, emotions were running high. The last thing greyhound racing needs is another scandal, and this trainer knows it. Do you export dogs too? We export you shortly. No. I don't want no camera, mate. The Faruja brothers wouldn't talk to us on camera. On the phone, Stephen Faruja tells me he and his brother Mark deliberately don't apply for the required Greyhound passport. I don't need no. I'm doing something for the country. I bring some money back to this country. What do you do for the country? Do you know what's happened to all the dogs you've sent to Macau? Do you know what? Do you know what life is like for them there? I don't know. Do you know what? Do you know what life's for them here? Yes, I do. And it says ex I'm not doing explicitly that you need a passport. I'm not doing anything illegal. I haven't accused you of doing anything illegal. I'm telling Technically, you that you the are Faruja not brothers are right. It may be against the rules of racing to export dogs, but it's not illegal. One legislative change by Agriculture Minister Barnaby Joyce would put an end to this international trade for good. Minister Joyce needs to get out his pen and sign an amendment to the Export Control Act. All that needs to happen is a minor amendment that says that dogs cannot be exported without industry approval, the Greyhound passport. That would put an end to it tomorrow. And the peak industry body, Greyhounds Australasia, agrees with the animal welfare lobby. In this written statement to 7.30, Greyhounds Australasia says it has repeatedly called on Minister Joyce to enact the passport scheme. The government's reluctance to act on industry and community concerns risks adverse welfare outcomes for exported greyhounds and threatens Australia's standing as a strong advocate for animal welfare. Despite the calls from all quarters, in a statement to 7.30 today, a spokesperson for the Agriculture Minister, Barnaby Joyce, said the government didn't believe mandating the passport scheme would address animal welfare concerns. The animal welfare lobby and the industry body representing greyhound racing in this country are now remarkably aligned. But will the government catch up?